Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel Sweet Art Crafts. In this video, I wanted to do another resin basics video showing you guys how I mix my epoxy resin and how I avoid micro bubbles. Before getting into the rest of this video, I just wanted to reiterate the epoxy resin safety. Make sure that you are wearing nitro gloves and are working in a well ventilated room with the windows open. A garage or a porch is preferable and also make sure that you are wearing a respiratory mask that uses vapor filters. In this clip here you guys can see I'm putting on my nitro gloves and usually nitro gloves come in this blue color and the respiratory mask that I use is by the 3M brand and it has vapor filters. Currently I use two different epoxy resin brands. The first brand is Art and & Glow and it is a one to one ratio resin meaning that I pour equal parts resin and equal parts hardener and I mix those two together to make my resin. Um, usually with one to one ratio resins they are a little bit thicker than um, two to one ratio resins because they have a higher viscosity so I typically like to use this resin for um, projects that I want more color in as opposed to um, the next brand that I will be showing later on. The second brand of resin that I like to use is Liquid Diamonds. This resin is a 2 to 1 ratio, meaning that I use 2 parts resin and 1 part hardener. Uh, this resin has a lower viscosity compared to Art & Glow, meaning that it is more liquidy. So this is why I like to use this resin for my more clear pieces. Because when I'm mixing it, it's harder for me to produce micro bubbles because they usually um, disappear as soon as I'm mixing it. When I'm mixing my resin, these are the types of cups that I like to use. The first cup is a silicone one and you can see that the measurements are on the inside of the cup. I really prefer um, using silicone just because it's easier to clean the resin um, later on once it's cured. The second cup that I like to use are number 5 ones and this one doesn't have any measurements on it but I usually use um, these cups when I'm working on pieces with more colors so that I can distribute them. And the last cup is also a number five cup but this one does have measurements on it so this is just another option to mix my resin together I like to um, use plastic utensils because wooden sticks usually are porous which means they can cause more micro bubbles in the resin Now I'm going to get started mixing my 1 to 1 ratio resin. So you can see I am pouring in the resin first and I'm going to pour 10 milliliters. And then I'm going to go in with the hardener and I'm also going to pour in 10 milliliters. Now I'm going to take my plastic knife and I'm going to start mixing my resin. As you guys can see, I am mixing super, super slow and I made sure to leave this entire clip in real time so you guys can get an idea of how slow I mix my resin because typically in my videos, I um, speed it up just because it takes so long. I will mix like this for about five to eight minutes because I'm trying to minimize as many bubbles as I can and as well because I don't like to use too much heat anymore because when I used to mix a little bit faster I would have to hit it with the heat gun and um, it would actually heat up the resin a little bit too much so I would have a minimized amount of working time with the resin and sometimes it would just cure inside of the cup that I'm mixing right now and it was just very annoying so that's why I just go really slow and as well using a plastic knife instead of a wooden stick because the wooden stick does cause micro bubbles and I didn't know that for a long time until I was doing a little bit more research and I noticed that um, why I was also getting so many bubbles was because of the wooden stick. 
and I know that you can buy plastic stirrers for resin at the store but whenever I would get takeout they would always give me um, plastic knives and I would always throw them away which is super wasteful so I started saving them so that I can use to mix my resin so yeah that's always an option that you guys can do and you can save a little bit of money there also don't forget to scrape the size of the cup because sometimes the hardener will linger there and you want to make sure your resin is fully mixed together because if it's not or if you do not have the measurements correctly um, your resin will not fully cure once the 24 to 48 hours are up and it will be soft and malleable and you do not want that because if you work so hard on your pieces and then it ends up like that it's kind of frustrating and it has happened to me before so it's been about five to eight minutes of mixing and I can tell that the resin is fully mixed because there are no more streaks and it is no longer cloudy. And you can see from mixing this slow, um, my resin has little to no microbubbles. There are some here and there, but it is inevitable to um, avoid bubbles altogether. It's just something that happens. The only way that you can get no bubbles is if you use a, a vacuum chamber, but that is something that I don't even want to get into because it seems a little bit tricky. So that's why I just like to stick to slowly mixing. Now I'm going to get started on mixing my 2 to 1 ratio resin. So I'm going to do two parts um, resin. So I'm going to pour 10 milliliters of resin. And then for the hardener, I'm going to put one part hardener. So I'm only going to pour in 5 milliliters of that. With my 2 to 1 ratio resin, I still mix in the same manner as my 1 to 1 ratio resin. So I just mix super, super slow because I just want to make sure I minimize as many micro bubbles as I can. Even though I know with the liquid diamonds um, resin, I usually don't have that many bu bubbles at all. But I just like to make sure that I mix in a very slow manner, just making sure that um, I mix until the cloudiness and the streaks are gone. Like I said earlier on in this video, I really like using this resin for my pieces that I want clear because when I pour them into the mold, um, they cure without any bubbles or anything like that usually. Um, the thing is that I don't really like using this resin for pieces that need color like paint, glitter, or even mica pigments because usually the pigments and the paint and everything drops to the bottom because of the lower viscosity. I know that if I let it sit for a little bit and get thicker, I can use the resin, but it just wastes too much time like waiting for the resin to just thicken up. So that is why I just like to use Art and Glow and why I use two different resins because I know some people have asked me why do I use two different ones. For this resin, I only need to mix for about 3-5 to five minutes and then I won't see any more cloudiness or streaks. And you guys can see there's barely any bubbles. There's a few micro bubbles here and there. But if I let it sit for about 5 minutes before pouring them into the mold, I will literally see barely any bubbles at all. So that's why I like um, using this resin. I just wanted to show you guys a side by side of both the resins um, next to each other after mix. On the right I have Art and Glow and on the left I have Liquid Diamonds. 
So I allowed the cups to sit for about 5 minutes before I started pouring them into the molds or adding any color to them because I wanted to make sure most of the bubbles could pop in them so I can reduce as many bubbles as I can and um, when I'm mixing in pigments or anything like that into my resin I will get some more bubbles so you will see me use my blowtorch to pop them. You just want to make sure you're very careful with the heat and that you don't use it too close to the mold and that you use it on the lowest stream possible and um, yeah. I hope you guys found this video helpful and if you have any questions make sure to leave them down below but don't forget to subscribe, comment, like, and share this video with your friends and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye now!